This is a super quick tutorial showing you how to build a liquid rheostat, which is a variable resistor for load testing, turbines and other kinds of generators. This one's just going to be using water and washing soda. Uh, it's a dollar's worth of materials. Uh, you can make it in about five minutes, basically. Uh, I'm going to be using this to test my wind turbine prototype and my water turbine prototype. Basically, a liquid rheostat is just a variable load. It lets you set how much resistance you're putting on your generator, which then determines how much of like an amperage load is being put on it. And you can then plot your power curve to try to find where your volts times your amps is the most amount of watts, essentially. You can also use uh, light bulbs of various kinds, uh, a classic choice, although they have certain issues, such as like their resistance can change if they heat up, um, and also they're quite discrete, like you plug in a light bulb you get that much more load, whereas this one is like purely analog, you can set it across you know, basically infinite points between your high and low uh, resistance. It's um, super easy to build, like about 10 minutes, about a dollar's worth of materials or so. So liquid rheostats are quite a old school Victorian era kind of like solution to this kind of problem. Um, traditionally they were mostly very large, for one thing this one's quite small. Um, they used sodium chloride and water traditionally, usually. Um, that's also an option. We're going to be using washing soda for the main reason that sodium chloride, when current goes through it, will electrolyze to hydrogen gas, which this will also produce, but it's not such a problem, it's not going to be much, it's not going to build up like explosively. Um, the main problem is that sodium chloride, when electrolyzed, releases chlorine gas. Again, that's not a massive health concern, but if it's avoidable, then all the better. And also you will, you will go through your sodium chloride over time, you need to keep it topped up. Whereas with this one, the washing soda pretty much stays in solution, uh, it doesn't get affected. The water will hydrolyze off to oxygen and hydrogen, but not in a way which is super problematic and you just keep the, keep the water topped up. I find that I do, if I'm going to be using this thing fairly long term, which generally I don't, it's just for like at the start to just kind of like get those power curves, um, it, I do need to, the, the resistance does increase with time, which is to say that the washing soda becomes less conductive with time, so I just keep that topped up, um, but I only need to do that like once a week or so if I'm using it across the week. So the materials for this are very basic, you just need a plastic bottle, um, about this size is, is good. Uh, in the cap I have drilled two holes, which are for the electrodes. Uh, in this case I'll be using stainless steel bike spokes, I'll just cut them off a wheel. You will definitely want to use stainless steel rather than mild steel, um, otherwise you're going to get a lot of stuff coming off into your solution, basically. Um, copper, aluminium, you can maybe get away with, but stainless steel is best. In order to tell the difference, uh, the easiest way is with the magnet. This is a galvanized mild steel spoke, and you can see that it's quite magnetic. Don't use that. The stainless ones are very slightly magnetic, but basically not at all. Um, also, you can just see that the, the stainless is a bit shinier. Uh, the, the galvanized is a bit sort of grayer and matter. Um, you'll definitely know if you're using non-stainless steel in the first sort of three seconds of actually using the thing because you're going to get stuck in a lot of black precipitate uh, coming off one of those electrodes. The other main material is sodium carbonate which is just washing soda. Uh, you can get this, like this looks like it's like a chemical that I've had to like order in or whatever, it's just because I've got a bag of it. You can get this in like pharmacies and it's just, it's washing soda. You know, it's, it's a household item. Uh, it's completely non-toxic. And then the other main materials that you'll need are just a bit of some kind of pipe, um, plastic pipe, which drill a whole bunch of holes 
in. This is purely for the sake of keeping your electrodes kind of close to each other because if they start to splay out or go all over the place uh, in your bottle then you're going to have your resistance vary on you uh, which you don't want and then the hole that is to allow the sort of exchange of solution through and across the electrodes so that you don't end up with um, like different you know resistance inside near the, the electrodes as away from them um, and then just two of these Wago connector type things, they're quite standard. Get the, the three-way connections because you'll need all of those. I've just drilled a small hole in the back of one of these, or both of these rather, so that the electrodes can go through them and make contact, and so then you can vary that electrode while remain maintaining contact to your wires and your meters. If you can't get these for some reason, then just standard alligator clips will do a fairly equivalent job, uh, but these are just a little bit nicer. Uh, and then the other material is a bit of heat shrink to insulate one of your electrodes so that the variable electrode basically can't touch it. I'm just going to cut a bit off the bottom there so there's like basically electrons coming out of here going through like a little bit of water and then into this electrode and out. You don't want to ever touch these electrodes or you're going to blow the fuse in your meter basically. Uh, but if it's going through like even if it's only like a couple of millimeters really of the solution then that won't pull so much current as to like blow your 10 amp fuse. So the first step is to make the non-variable resistor. Uh, so you're just going to take one of your electrodes, you're going to chuck it through that guy, uh, you're going to put it through the cap. You want to drill your holes in your cap small enough that kind of grabs a bit, uh, just so that when you're setting your variable resistor it stays in place, um, and also so that you get sort of minimal leakage out the hole here. It's probably a good idea once this is all made up to have like a second cap that you can just like take this whole assembly out and then leave the solution as in and then put a cap on which is going to lock, lock that off so you don't get any leaks. Uh, so you're going to sort of set that to maximum there. You're going to get your heat shrink, chuck that on there. Measure it so you've got just like about maybe half a centimeter of gap off the end. Um, to make contact with the water and then just lock that in. I will be using the heat gun, but it's stopped working. You do want a good seal on this, because if water can sort of come up inside there, then it's going to connect, conduct um, electricity out, which you definitely don't want. Okay, so that's the first electrode finished basically, and then the second one you're going to measure such that it can't touch this guy. So you can either just make it like a little bit shorter, or what I'm going to do is put just like a little bit of heat shrink on the end there so that there's basically no overlap between the two. That'll also help to stop you from like pulling the whole thing out uh, just in case you do that. And 
and that's basically the electrodes done, uh, essentially. So that's pretty simple. And then go from there. This goes in here. You could theoretically, and I did last time, use stainless steel rope. Uh, it's like cable, basically, instead of these. Uh, it's another sort of like good accessible source of cheap stainless steel. The issue with that is that it's bendy, and if you're putting it in here, it can sort of like snag on the side and curl up and sort of go weird on you. It's a bit, um, it's a bit annoying. So this is now just going to go in here. And physically speaking, that's your liquid rheostat. That's it finished. The rest of it is going to be just adding uh, washing soda to this to get up to the conductivity so we can have the, the homage that we want. To use and test and calibrate this, you will need two multimeters, one for volts, one for amps. You will need a battery, uh, and you'll just need some, you know, just wire. So the purpose of the battery is because, unfortunately, if you just put a multimeter on ohms, on resistance measuring, across these electrodes, the, the meter's going to freak out. It's not going to make any sense of what's going on in here at all. Um, your, your number's going to go all over the place. So the way to test the resistiveness of this is to uh, put, a, put a known voltage through it. So I've got a 18 volt, it's just like a power drill battery. I'm just going to put that through the thing. I'm going to measure the voltage in the system. I'm going to me measure the amperage of the system. So once you know your voltage going through the system, once you know your amperage going through the system, then you can very easily calculate your ohmage, your resistance, because VCR, your resistance equals your voltage divided by your current, by your amps. So for this one, I'm going to be testing the hydro turbine, which is probably going to be putting out about 120 volts um, open circuit, so an under zero load, but under sort of maximum load, or well under like, under load that's going to come down to maybe 60 volts, and I want to have this good up to at least 6 amps, um, so 60 volts divided by 6 amps equals 10 ohms, so what I want in calibrating the system is to have, when this is, when this, the variable electrode is maximally into the system, then I want a 10 ohm resistance reading from there. And then as I pull that out of the bottle, it's going to increase the resistance and so drop the current down to pretty much zero. If I just had like, just like the, the very end of this, like touching the water, then I might get like 100 ohms or something, which is, and so then being able to vary that from sort of minimum current to maximum current and then when I'm testing the turbine, plotting those data points will give me like a power curve uh, and then that'll let me find the, the, the peak of that power curve, which is the maximum power that can be, limit like the, the load that I want to put onto the turbine that'll give me the maximum wattage out. You'll want to use this with uh, direct current only. If you try to use this with like AC coming off an alternator, it's going to go weird on you. So you will need to put your AC, if you're generating AC, through a bridge rectifier. Uh, so you've got DC going through, so you've got like coming off your bridge rectifier, going through your amp meter, going through your um, rheostat, and then back to the other DC terminal of the bridge. And you'll want to measure, when you're using this to measure, to uh, load test your turbine, the voltage across the two terminals of the bridge rectifier, not the two terminals of this guy. 
because they will give you a slightly um, skewed reading just because of the rest of the resistance on voltage drop of the system. I made that mistake um, when I was testing the hydro turbine and I also made the mistake of under-investing in my alligator clips, which were like really, really thin wire, so I just got them cheap. And so they were putting off a lot of resistance and it looked like I was getting, and then I was measuring uh, just across here. And so it really threw off my readings. Um, so I got just decent wire and measured across the bridge and everything was happy, basically. So you're gonna come from your battery through your amp meter. Amps on amps 10. It doesn't really matter which of these is your in and which is your out. It's basically symmetrical. Uh, it'll go either way. So your amp meter is going to come into let's say this guy. This is why these Wago connectors are really good because you can just like chuck whatever in them. Uh, and then your voltmeter. Uh, be volts DC 20. It's going to come into here as well. Again, if you're using this to uh, te like actually test, you'll have this across your bridge rectifier. But we want to find this, the, the resistance of this guy itself. Just jam that in there. Just you can. Uh, and then the other voltmeter guy is going to come off the other one up here. And then you're going to want just one bit of wire, doesn't need to be very long. Double that over because that's going to be going into the battery terminal. It's going to get stiff. So that's going to come off this guy. Into this guy. I won't do that just yet. I'll do that when I'm sort of ready to. So the schematic of this is very simple. You've got it in your battery, through your amps, to your electrode, through what will be the, the solution, out to your electrode, back to your battery. So just blah, 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 blah. And then you've got your volts in parallel across your electrodes. Now it's just a matter of putting some water in this guy and then starting to add the washing soda until your volts divided by your amps equals your ohms that you'll want. It would be obviously nicer if like a multimedia, multimeter would just measure the resistance of this accurately, but it doesn't. Um, but you're going to have to use this exact same setup to measure your uh, your output uh, from your from your thing anyway, so you might as well you know, get used to it now. So that's water. You don't need or want to fill this right up to the top uh, because you don't want any sort of like interaction of you know basically the short circuit uh, across here if it were like right up to the top. So I forgot to bring a funnel from my kitchen, so I just made on one for a piece of paper and some tape. 
and then I'm just going to start adding the soda to the water until I'm then testing uh, my volts and amps until I get a number that I like and then basically we're done. Okay, let's measure that, see so what happens. Each time you use this, also, like, immediately before you um, run your run your generator, you will want to give this a shake, or at least just turn it upside down and back down again, just to disperse the disperse the soda, so that it's all sort of even, because it will tend to congregate at the bottom over time. Like it doesn't drop out super quickly, but it's still a good idea just to chuk chuk your, uh, your bottle just before you, you run your turbine or whatever it is you're testing. Okay, so let's chuck this guy in here. Okay, and so we want to test with your maximum conductivity, your minimum resistance, so both electrodes like fully immersed, um, basically. Now, being careful, again, you don't want to, I mean, we've made those electrodes that they can't touch each other, but just make sure that your electrodes can't touch each other. Um, and you are now sticking wires into batteries, so a certain level of respect is due. So this is on 10 amps, 10 amps fused. This is on volts DC. 20 will do it, it's an 18 volt battery, uh, that you'll, you know, depending on what your generator is, will determine what you want to put that on when you're actually using this, but for now, that's all good, and we touch that, 19.7, so, which is like 1.25, that's about, I guess, 15, 16 ohms, so we're getting kind of close. Uh, I'll add just a little bit more, just to bring it down towards 10. But, I, mean, I could I could quite happily use it as is, to be honest. So that's your lesson in how toxic this stuff is, which is not at all toxic, but it does have a certain lemony kind of zesty kind of flavor, which, um, yeah, don't fucking, don't do recreationally, essentially. Well, I would not recommend doing lines of this stuff. Okay. You can see that some of this is not there. Ah, Jesus. <coughs> this is why I'm not a chemist, man, because I would definitely die on day one. So. You can see that there is some of this, like, doesn't dissolve, it stays um, as clumps. That's fine. As long as we get the numbers that we want, everything's great. 
so I will back in. I'm just going to take a reading of this at its minimum, just to see what that looks like. Get up towards 40 ohms. So that's not as little as I would like, but it's just kind of the trade-off. Like if you want to make it more conductive for more um, more current, you're also making it more conductive for your lower end of things. The solution to that is to have longer electrodes in a longer bottle just so that you can get more distance between them. So here I'm sort of limited by the length of my bike spokes because they're only coming down to about you know, like three quarters of the way down the bottle. If I had longer bits of metal, I come all the way down and I could get that extra bit of resistance. But so I'm getting about a three to one, four to one ratio between my sort of like my high and my low. So I might leave it there. Uh, I don't really want to add too much more soda just because it's going to make it difficult to measure my low amp side of things. Uh, so I'm happy with that. So I can pack all this up, basically. And so that's it. That's just a good real stat. Uh, very simple, very cheap, pretty effective. Uh, it's a good option for if you're testing stuff like way off grid that you're out in the field somewhere and you don't have access to, to much else, basically. Um, uh, there are other options you can use, like I say, you can use toaster wire, you can use um, light bulbs and the like but they all sort of have their own issues. I find this is sort of like the most robust and the most easily, easily variable. So I'm now going to be taking this out to Glasgow um, to trial my water turbine prototype out there. I'm going to retest the site for that. Uh, I'm going to be trying different things. So it'll just be a matter of plugging this onto the the turbines, I've got the turbines running an alternator, alternator going through a bridge rectifier, three, feet, three phase AC to DC. Plug this in as I had it plugged in here, exactly the same. Um, try a thing, write down some numbers, alter the like the, the electrode, pull it out a bit, write down volts and amps, or probably just like have the camera point at the multimeters and then just like analyze that later. Um, tweak something on the turbine, Tick, 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 tick. have a power curve out afterwards and then uh, that'll give me all the data that I need to see how to optimize the, the turbine and how much power and efficiency it can do with the with the, the water available. I've also got the wind turbine up on the roof here um, which I'll be load testing uh, in a similar way. A few notes on safety, just the ways in which you could potentially damage yourself with this. Um, electricity is involved, so don't touch any of the metal. Like, the variable resistor is exposed metal. It kind of has to be, because it has to like be able to slide through the, uh, through the cap. Um, testing it with the battery, you're only looking at like 20 volts. You're probably not going to do yourself much damage with that, but don't touch the metal, basically. Um, if you're concerned about that, wear gloves. Any kind of gloves, just like latex gloves, will, um, will see you right. Um, providing you don't get yourself like you know covered in water or whatever. When you're testing your turbine, that can be a very different situation. That can be a lot of volts, a lot of amps, um, depending on the thing itself. So again, just be super careful. Um, Basically, if you can, essentially just don't touch the thing. If it's something that you can do discreetly, if you can like flip a switch to like to break the circuit, adjust the thing. This is if, if you've got any concerns about electrocuting yourself whatsoever, and you should, um, 
then you can break the circuit, adjust the thing, turn the, you know, the switch is all safe, hit that, write down your numbers, turn it off and do it discreetly. Um, or like I say, gloves are probably a good idea. I will be using gloves when I'm testing the water turbine with this because it's water, you know, I'm going to you know, get splashed and stuff. Um, and that turbine can put out enough power to, you know, do some damage. This is not more dangerous than pretty much any other kind of load if you know get your finger in some exposed metal with you know current running through it then you'll wish you hadn't basically chemically like i say the washing soda is pretty benign it's washing soda you're not gonna do yourself any damage even if you inhale a lungful of it like i just did um and the rest of it is is just you know basic tools and stuff don't drill through your hand or whatever um, oh, the other thing, <laughs> hydrogen gas is the other sort of like main thing to, to worry about um, in that don't really worry about it. It's not going to build up so it's got much pressure or much volume uh, or much sort of propensity to explode. Um, if you're concerned about it, you can just drill an extra hole in here so that it can waft off as soon as it, as soon as it builds up. Um, don't smoke directly into your liquid rheostat. I guess that's pretty much, you know, good for various reasons. Um, like I say, if you're using sodium chloride or other kind of, like, um, electrolytes for this, uh, sodium chloride will put off chlorine gas when it electrolyzes. I don't want to use it for that reason, but as I understand it, you're unlikely to get like actually dangerous levels of chlorine gas, even in an enclosed space, which you're unlikely to be using this in, uh, it's unlikely to do much harm. Chlorine gas is quite good in that it lets you know when it's poisoning you, like it'll build up, it'll start stinging your eyes, you get a taste in your mouth. Um, so if that happens, then, you know, open a window or whatever. Um, and then if you're using some really weird stuff, don't. Washing soda is easy to get. Just use washing soda, it's easy. Uh, there is a process for converting baking soda into washing soda, just by putting it in your oven. Um, if you're somewhere that you're that hard up for, for options, then probably use table salt, honestly. If like you've just got like nothing to work with, you can just, just use cable, table salt. Keep it topped out, keep yourself aerated, and, uh, and you'll be fine. I think that's about it. So hopefully that was useful to you. I don't think there's another tutorial on the internet on how to make a liquid rheostat. Not one that I've found. Um, these, this is what I use myself, so it's uh, it's the best option that uh, for me for, for for testing stuff in the field. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions or the usual, then tag them below. And um, yeah, the. The next time you'll see this will be in probably the next video that I'll do, which will be the results from the water turbine testing. Uh, so you get to see this in action there. Uh, thanks for your time. Hopefully this is useful to you, and I will see you around.